When it comes to choosing software for you to be able to create on, the variety of apps available to you can be a little bit overwhelming. A quick Google search reveals that you have to try and true Adobe Suite, Procreate, Clip Studio Paint, Concepts, and even some free ones like GIMP and Blender. But how do you decide which app is right for you? You need to find something that is reliable and fun to use, but also something that's going to help deliver to yours and your client's goals. So granted, I haven't tried every single app that I just listed, although I have tried my fair share of them. But over the years, there's been one group of applications that's slowly been winning me over, and that's the Affinity Suite. Hey friends, I'm Riskit, and in today's video, I wanna give you a quick overview of what the Affinity Suite is to help you decide if it's gonna help you reach your goals. I'm gonna be talking about how I came across them, the key features, the pros and cons of using some of these apps, and most importantly, how it stacks up against the competition. This isn't going to be an in-depth review or anything. I mean, after all, up until this point, my entire channel has been built on creating tutorials that show you how to use like Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer. And Serif even had me host one of their creative sessions on their YouTube channel earlier this year. By the way, if you haven't checked that out yet, I'll leave a link to it down below in the description. So yeah, I don't think it would be a very fair or unbiased review if it was one, because I actually really like Affinity's apps that much. But for all the good I have to say about them, I definitely do think that there are some downsides that need to be considered before diving in. It's important to keep in mind that these are just my own thoughts and opinions, and you are entitled to your own. So if there's anything along the way that I skip over when discussing this topic, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'd love to get some more back and forth on this. Also, this video isn't sponsored, no one's paying me to say any of this. I just get questions about these apps all the time and I thought it might be best to summarize all of those into one video. So let's get started. So for a long, long time, Adobe has dominated the market. I think originally it was Corel, but Adobe quickly took over when it released applications like Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, and even some video editing and compositing tools like Premiere Pro and After Effects. In 2013, Adobe switched over to a subscription-based model. And as much as some people seem to really hate that, it actually had some benefits. You now had easier access to their updates and no longer needed to purchase an entire new suite just to gain access to them. You are now able to download the apps across multiple computers and activate your account on which one you chose to, which removed the need of searching through boxes and boxes for your installer key and Adobe integrated Adobe libraries into their apps, which helped their apps talk to each other a little bit better, but more on that later. Originally, for me at least, Adobe launched at $49.99 for an annual subscription plan. But over time, it's increased to $76.99, which means I'm forking out $923.88 Australian per year just to gain access to all of these applications. This is way more money than it used to cost if you decided to buy the whole suite outright like you used to be able to. Now, up until this point, I don't think people really bothered with other apps. But when Adobe introduced their subscription model, people began looking for other options. And there were other options. The only downside is a lot of these other apps had such a different workflow than what Adobe had set up that you almost felt like you were learning your trade all over again. Enter in Affinity by Serif. Since launching, Serif have produced three separate apps. Affinity Designer, which is their graphic design tool, Affinity Photo for photo editing, and Affinity Publisher for the creation of books and magazines and other published content. All three of these apps share a lot of similarities with some of Adobe's applications. For example, Affinity Designer is so much like using Adobe Illustrator that even some of the shortcuts are the same. Affinity Photo is extremely similar to using Photoshop and Affinity Publisher is kind of like InDesign except with a much cleaner UI. But the best part is at the time of making this video, each app only costs $84.99 Australian, which means that there's no subscription model, you just buy it and it's yours. But sitting back and calling these apps Photoshop and Illustrator clones is really doing a disservice to what Serif have put together here. Each application boasts a ton of unique and interesting ideas that really helps them stand out from the competition. 
I actually stumbled across Affinity Designer when I was Googling on how to do something in Adobe Illustrator. I was working on developing some web elements for a company and I wanted to see how my vector artwork would look once it was exported into pixel-based artwork. Except I wanted a real-time preview of this and I quickly learned that Illustrator just couldn't do that. However, there was an app out there that could do this and that was called Affinity Designer. I read that Affinity Designer could not only give me a live preview of how my vector illustrations would look on a standard screen, but also on a retina display as well. It was exactly what I was looking for, so I downloaded a trial. I was amazed at how easy it was for me, a long time Adobe user, to adapt to using Affinity Designer. That feature though was only just scratching the surface. Affinity Designer had a ton of features right out of the box that I didn't even know I needed. For example, it lets you pan and zoom across the canvas at 60 frames a second, but at 1 million percent zoom. There's no limit to the amount of artboards that you can have. You can customize your keyboard shortcuts, and you can even export your files to work in Photoshop and Illustrator. Now, I don't have time to get into every great feature that Affinity Designer has to offer, but one feature I think stands out the most above all is its personas. There's a vector persona, which lets you use the app in the same way that you would use Adobe Illustrator. But with the click of a button, you switch over to a pixel persona. This gives you a whole new set of tools and if you want a slightly different user interface. And now you can use it the same way you would use Adobe Photoshop. This for me was a game changer. For a long time, I'd really liked creating illustrations inside of Adobe Illustrator, but I always wanted to paint a little bit of grit and texture on top of them. At the end of the day, it was just gonna be exported as a pixel-based image anyway, but what I was after was the creative control of illustrating with vector shapes, but the creative freedom of painting in detail on top of them in a pixel-based workflow. I would spend hours creating a piece of art in Adobe Illustrator, but then I'd spend another hour just to make sure that I imported it correctly into Photoshop, retaining all of the same layer information. Now, there is a couple of different ways that you can go about doing this, each with their pros and cons, but those workflows always felt like more of an afterthought than an actual feature, and it left me feeling really frustrated. But now, here was Affinity Designer that let you do all of that in one application. If you've been following my channel for a while now, you probably got my workflow down pat, but if you haven't seen it, I basically create my line work using vector brushes and then create clipping masks that I can paint pixel-based images inside of. It's super easy and I'm never worried about coloring outside of the lines, but it's also a non-destructive workflow, which means that I can come in at any time, at any stage during the creation process, make changes, and I don't have to start over from scratch. Now, I wish I had a lot more to say about the other two apps. I do find myself reaching for Affinity Photo a lot more than Photoshop these days, and that's mainly because it's faster to launch. And that brings me to another thing that these three apps have in common. It's their speed. If I launch an Adobe application, especially on my laptop, it takes a good while before that program is fully loaded. Affinity's apps launch within just a few seconds though, and better yet, it handles the projects ridiculously well. I've got some files that are thousands and thousands of layers deep with a lot of complex detail. And while I'm scrolling and panning or even loading it from scratch, affinities just, they don't skip a beat. One thing that seems to be missing though, and I'm really happy about this, is the bugs. Like I think I've had Affinity Designer crash on me maybe three to four times since I've owned it. And I bought it a few years ago. If I were to sit here and count the amount of times I've had an Adobe application just up and crash on me, we would be here for hours. One thing I want to point out that I don't see a lot of people discussing is how these apps all talk to one another. See, with Adobe, I'm pretty sure what they do is they buy up pre-existing applications that were made by other companies. They buy them, they slap their logo on it, and they make a few changes without making any changes to the core functionality of that app. Now this is great, we get a lot of really good apps that do slightly work similarly with one another, except they kind of don't. 
For one, most of the shortcuts on their apps are completely different, so there's not really any consistency. You've got to memorize them for each individual app. And the UIs might seem similar at first glance, but you'll quickly realize that they all operate in a very different way. Worse yet, trying to send elements between Photoshop and Illustrator, vice versa, can sometimes be a real chore and it has its own set of issues. And we're not even getting into some of the issues you can face when you're working between Premiere and After Effects. Now, Adobe did eventually release a libraries panel across all of their apps to help things talk to one another a little bit better. But to me, this always just seemed like a little bit of a band-aid on a problem that they just weren't able to fix. Serif, on the other hand, has built their apps to be as consistent and streamlined as possible. The shortcuts are the same across each app that you use, and you can easily send things back and forth. You can even just copy something from Affinity Designer and paste it directly into Affinity Photo, and it's all still there, even if you just copy all of the layers. So yeah, the workflow on these apps is super flexible, in my opinion. Better yet, Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo are both available on the iPad, and aside from the UI looking slightly different, everything is there. I used to cart my laptop and my graphics tablet around with me if I needed to work away from home, and I'd have cables running everywhere and it took up a lot of space. But now I can just bring an iPad along with me and an Apple Pencil, and I have one of the most flexible sketchbooks in the world. Now I don't really buy into the whole Apple ecosystem. I don't own any Apple products other than the iPad, but I bought it specifically to use Affinity Designer while I was on the go, and I don't regret it one bit. And look, Adobe have released some apps for the iPad and different mobile devices over the years as well, but I couldn't tell you how many apps I've seen Adobe release just to completely abandon or take off of the store because no one's using them. They're often really buggy, and overall for me, it's just been a really bad experience. But no matter how good an app is, how many features it has to offer, or how well it runs, there's always going to be some downsides that we need to consider. So let's explore some of those. And as a quick note, a lot of these complaints that I'm going to raise are mainly features that I used to have access to when I was using Adobe's products all the time that I wished were in Affinity Designer, really. So maybe they're not exactly fair complaints because Affinity Designer is definitely its own thing, but there are already so many similarities between Designer and Illustrator that these are just some features I'd really like to see carried over. Just before we do though guys, if you're liking this video so far, be sure to let me know by leaving me a thumbs up. And if you like learning more about art and illustration and Affinity, then feel free to subscribe for more. Alright, let's move on. Now for starters, Affinity Designer doesn't have an image tracing feature. In Adobe Illustrator, you can drag in a pixel-based image and with the click of a button, turn it into a vector image with varying results depending on what you're using it for. That said, once you've done that, you also have a whole list of features that you can tweak to your liking so that you can get the best results and then move on from there. In Affinity Designer, if you want something to be vector, then you pretty much have to trace the image manually yourself, which can take hours longer than just the click of a button that Illustrator provides. Now granted, there are some companies out there you can purchase a few credits from and do this entirely in your web browser, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's definitely a viable option as well. It would just be nice if it lived inside of Designer too. One thing I really do miss from Illustrator though is its warping functionality. Adobe Illustrator has a ton of options when it comes to warping things, and you can warp vectors. So let's say you have a vector illustration, you can warp it, but then it's a non-destructive workflow, which means that at any point you can unwarp it, quickly tweak your artwork, and then warp it back to how you had it. This would be really useful. Sometimes you can spend hours creating something and you realize that you just wanted it to be a slightly different shape or angle and adding a slight warp can be the difference between having to start from scratch or just bending it. Now, there is a slight workaround to this. In Affinity Designer, you can copy something and paste it into Affinity Photo, which has a rather basic grid warping tool. But the only downside is if you use that tool, you need to apply it in order for it to finish. 
And once you do that, it rasterizes your artwork, which means that it's quite a destructive workflow and you've got no option to go back and change the vector work that you've already done. I really hope that Affinity Designer can incorporate something like this sometime in the near future. A couple of other features that I really enjoyed using was the Blend tool, which lets you take a spline and another spline and blend between it with as many copies as you want. You could then attach that blend to a third spline and get some really interesting results. Pair it all up with some gradients and I used to use this method in a lot of my graphic design work for different corporate companies and they loved it. There's no feature that exists like that in Affinity Designer and I really wish that there was. There's also the 3D tool that Illustrator has. I think it's a really unique feature and although it doesn't always behave the way that I want, um, it can make approaching isometric illustrations or other things a little bit easier by just rotating your vector, extruding it, and then um, beveling the edge to help you get started. Now, Affinity Designer has got a really good isometric workflow, but it's definitely a lot more manual than doing it in Adobe Illustrator. That said, I have got some really cool results trying out the isometric workflow in Designer, so not a total deal breaker. Now, I'm sure there are a lot of other features that could be listed here, but the one tool that I really, really wish Affinity Designer had is the stroke width tool. Now granted, Affinity Designer has a really cool method of approaching the width of your stroke. You can pretty much set up a stroke profile across a little graph and then save it and have it applied to several different strokes at once. In Illustrator, it works slightly different. You press a button, you hover over a stroke and you can bend it, twist it, make it wider, thinner. Uh, there's a lot of options there. However, you can't save the stroke profile in there you need to apply it to each stroke individually. Now, I use both of these tools a lot when I'm working in each of those apps, but what I'd really like to see is a combination of the two. Something that gives you complete control over your stroke, like you have in Illustrator, but something that still lets you save that and apply it to multiple strokes at once. I just feel like in Affinity Designer, having that stroke width graph is really awesome but sometimes it's a little finicky to keep having to go back to a graph just to edit some of your stroke work. Now, there's a bunch of things that Affinity Photo can't do that Photoshop can do. And let's face it, Photoshop is a beast, especially with all of the AI functionality that they've just thrown into it. Even still, I find myself reaching for Affinity Photo a lot. It's very clean, it runs extremely fast, and I just plain like using it. So we've talked about the pros and cons of using Affinity's apps. But what about the ultimate question? Can we use them for professional use? And the answer is, it's complicated. See, I still subscribe to the Adobe Suite. I still use a lot of their video editing software. And sometimes a client will come to me with a job that's just better suited for Illustrator, mainly because of those reasons that I just finished listing. I'm also a certified trainer, so I actually train people in how to use the Adobe applications in a professional environment. Because in the world of graphic design, Illustrator, Photoshop and InDesign are kind of industry standard. The majority of people I talk to in this field don't even know that Affinity Designer exists. So it goes without saying that learning your way around the Adobe suite is going to be hugely beneficial for future employment. But is it always going to be worth it? A lot of my students get free access to the Adobe Creative Cloud depending on the workplace they're in. And if not, they get a student discount because they're studying. This is really good while they're learning the ropes. But if they finish their traineeship or they finish school and they don't have any employment lined up, then how are they supposed to continue building their portfolio? If they continue to subscribe to the Adobe suite, that's quickly going to drain their bank account. But if while they're learning, they save up and at least buy Affinity Designer, then they have an app that they're going to own forever, that they can continue to build their portfolio with and do more creative work, especially in the world of freelancing. So this is what I tell all of my students and the people who are just starting out. The workflow with Adobe and Affinity is so similar that one is going to be relatively easy to pick up once you've already learned the other. So there's no harm in learning either, 
but an employer is probably going to be hopeful that you have at least some experience in using an Adobe application. If you're doing freelance, however, I would stick to Affinity Designer for as long as you can. Then if you have a client come to you and there is something that Affinity Designer can't do, then sign up for a month plan through the Adobe Creative Cloud. That way you're not locked into an annual subscription that you can't escape and you can put the cost of that month long subscription into the invoice that you send to the client for the work. That way you're also not out of pocket. It's always a good idea to spread your skills across multiple apps and different platforms to try and find each app's strengths and weaknesses. There's no one size fits all, but an employer will appreciate your ability to adapt to whatever they're using in-house. I recommend Affinity's apps to every digital artist that I know, and I'm not going to stop using it anytime soon. I think the features that it offers more than justify the cost of buying it, and I haven't found a workflow like it anywhere else. I hope that this video has been insightful to anyone watching, but feel free to leave your own thoughts and opinions down below in the comments section. As I said earlier, I would really love to get some more back and forth on this. What are you using Affinity for? And what would you like to see more come out from Serif? Personally, I'd like to see an Adobe Lightroom clone that integrates really well with Affinity Photo. I think that would be really awesome. Anyways, that's it for me today, guys. Hit the like if you like, and if you don't, tell me why. Please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.